I have eight questions here and you will pick three numbers and whatever uh, questions they correlate with, that's where we start at least. First number. Why don't I go with five then? Thank you. What is something that you absolutely cannot be on set without, whether it is your sides, a, a certain snack, something to pass the time in between scenes, you name it? Um, I think I need to really know my lines. I guess I don't care about much else and I don't like it when it's, um, when it's super cold. Sometimes these studios are freezing and they'll, and you know, and because we're, um, you're often not dressed appropriately for whatever season. Now outside there's stuff to, you know, they, they bring you a warming coat, but inside the studio, I think they have it at like 60 or something, which, which not only is bad for the climate, but it's just also not great for us ladies. I feel you. <laughs> outside from that, yeah, what else do I need? Uh, I really like it when it's just uh, when everyone feels good, like there's no stress. I don't like stress. So that's really nice. I also don't like yelling. And we have a really nice set. <laughs> like people aren't yelling at each other. What is your second number? Three. What is something that you did for a past role that now makes you think, I'm really glad that I tried that, but I don't ever have to do that again. You know what? I'm not even glad I tried it. I had a, I did a, a movie in Holland it was a, a super low budget, but you know, I like the filmmaker, everything. And there was a, a moment where I had to jump into a pond and we were in the middle of nowhere. This pond, it was in the middle of the night. It was very cold again. And um, uh, the camera was in the water and it was like looking up and I didn't know where it was. We were behind uh, on schedule as you are always. And like people were yelling at me, like, just jump, just jump. The camera's in there. And like, I, I do not know where the camera is. How do I know where to jump? They were like, it's fine, it's fine. And I jumped in and I hit my head on the camera and uh, it was awful. And then I got really sick because I'd been like in that pond the whole time and it was so cold that I lost my voice. I think like when people start yelling at me to just do something without knowing um, you know, what you're doing. I think I would be at the point in my career now where I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna go just because you're yelling. You have one more pick. What is your last number? Ooh, number one then. Would you rather have to fake sneeze or fake vomit in a scene? Fake sneeze is hard. Who taught me that? One of my girls taught me that actually on Evil. No, they taught me fake hiccup, which is also quite hard. Uh, I think I would rather fake vomit. It's easier, you know, you get a bunch of goo in your mouth and s sneezing, um, even like if I would try to do it, what do you do? I can't, I'm not gonna embarrass myself, but I'd have to like get the technique right. Cause even with like the hiccups, gosh, I have to call one of my evil daughters cause they're very good at both fake sneezing and fake hiccuping. And then when they told me how to do it, I was like, you've saved me. I'm going to use this now I've forgotten, but there's a trick. What's up, everyone? Welcome back for a brand new edition of Collider Ladies Night. I'm very excited for this episode because I have Katya Herbers on the show. And I'll tell you, I am embarrassed to admit how long it took me to finally take many, many people's advice and binge <laughs> evil. But this show is very much right up my alley. You are exceptional in it. And I just adore it. I'm happy you found it. I feel like that's, that's our challenge right there. Like, I feel like we're making something good. We just need people to find it. That's what Ladies' Night is for, spreading the word. What was the movie, the performance, or personal experience that first made you say, I have to be an actor and nothing else? Gosh, I wish I had such a great answer to that. I just, I think I was, as a child, I was quite, um, like, I was always observing how people felt and, and uh, like, how they related to each other. And maybe I was quite quiet and a bit shy and... My parents split up when I was very young, so I was in like two very different environments. And um, I think for me, it's a way to, yeah, what is it? What the hell am I doing? I don't know. I've just been fascinated with people's behavior. I think I have, a, I feel like I've got something to give there. I love, uh, I love my job, but it wasn't like, oh, I saw, you know, the film Annie. And I was like, oh my God, I want to be part of this orphanage and I want to sing and I love Miss Hannigan I loved that movie but it wasn't like oh I need to be that and then when I um 
when I did become or did know like, oh, I want to be an actor, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, this is the most embarrassing thing. Why do I, I am I seriously going to tell people that I want people to look at me because I was so shy. Like, I was never like doing any things. But then I figured out, oh no, it's actually, you, there are different different types of actors, like people who really always want to be in the spotlight and people who are quite introverted, which is more like how I am or like extroverted introvert. I think I <laughs> like I can I can be extroverted, but I need a lot of time to just recharge. And, you know, if there's a dinner party, I don't I don't have the best stories or anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. When you first said to yourself, I want to be an actor, I want to make this my career. What did you think step one to becoming an actor was at the time? And now having gone through that phase, would you actually recommend that step as step one to an aspiring actor out there? I actually do. I think I think it, it turned out in the end. Like I, I was um, 18 when I first auditioned here in Holland in Amsterdam for a theater school. And they were like, yeah, you're, you're maybe something, but you're really young. Go live a little and come back. And then, you know, at the time, the world was different. Um, I could just get, you know, now I feel a little worse about flying, climate change. But at the time, it was like a great, you know, I'm going to go, you know, get, get, uh, live. And I went to, I had like, I went like this whole trip to Thailand. And then I went to New York on my own for six months. I thought, you know, then I'll maybe I'll grow up and I'll have some experiences. And then I went to Uta Hagen's uh, um, HB Studios in New York. And then I did have a whole bunch of experiences. and as heartbroken as I was in the beginning, not getting in at 18, I think when I, after I, when I did get in at 21, that was way better. I had, I had done some assisting in the theater. I had, um, <laughs> I had tried actually, this is quite a funny story. I, I uh, wanted to hang coats in the theater here in Amsterdam because I thought this is great. Then I can see all these plays and I uh, applied. And the guy who was doing the interview with me said like, you know what, I understand you want to, you know, you want to be here in the theater, but the people who work here, they have to like, just have a bit of, you know, a bit of something, something. You just don't have it. You just don't have it. I don't think we can have you hang the coats of people. And then later when I performed there on stage a lot, I was like, oh, I always thought of that guy going like, I, he wouldn't even let me hang the freaking coats. Um, but uh, I think rejection is great to have under your belt, a bit of trauma, uh, have loved a little, don't get too successful too early. I don't know if that's good for anyone. I'm happy that I just went to like regular theater school. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't a big shot. I'm, I don't still feel like a big shot, but like, I don't, I think my girls on the show, so I have four daughters on the show. I think they're really great and I think they'll be fine. Um, and also maybe because we're not, you know, a huge Netflix hit or something like Stranger Things that they're being followed or, but I don't know what fame would do to a really young person when you're just, yeah. What would you say required the biggest learning curve when you first came over to the States oh. and started working in the Hollywood system? Because I've got to imagine it's a very different beast to tackle. Yeah, auditioning. The, the American way of auditioning is very different. Like you do not in America, you read often with people who aren't actors, you know, who are looking down at what at their sides. It, that does not exist in Holland. Self-taping. I had no idea how to do that. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it so much. Now I've gotten, I've gotten better at it, but oh my God, I actually have, I don't have it here. Otherwise I would show you, but I have like, I think it's a stack of this many sides of auditions that I did after Manhattan because Manhattan I got very easily like within two weeks I was like oh my gosh this is easy America what the hell what's the problem and then after that got canceled which I think shouldn't have gotten canceled but mm -hmm. after it got canceled um it took me a while to 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 book anything substantial like my next series regular was Westworld which was you know a bit later also because I was very picky I really only, I thought if I'm going to be in America and I'm going to be away from my friends and my family, I really want to be on something that I want to watch and that I think is amazing and that I wouldn't be able to make in Holland because otherwise I can just go home. Like, why would I? So I did turn down like some things that I didn't, didn't like 
jumping into evil now, what would you say it was about the show and the character specifically that made you think like, this is something that I want to apply myself on that deep level to right now? Well, the Kings, Robert and Michelle King and, and, you know, their writing and uh, how, what I'd seen of their writing and of their lead female roles and how expansive that is and how it keeps changing and 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 then my meeting with them um because I met with them for the role I just connected a lot on a sense of humor and they were looking for somebody who um because I do mostly comedy here in Holland or is kind of what I'm more known for here not in, not in America but they were looking for someone who could bring a little bit of lightness uh, or, or had like some of that background, like Asif Monvi, obviously he's a stand-up comedian. I'm in no way a stand-up comedian, but um, so they were looking for people to bring some some of that to this sometimes quite dark world. And I think that's uh, that worked out quite well on our show because I think it is very funny. And, and you know, their writing is so, so funny and, and it's so layered and I'm just really proud of it. I, I really love the show. It boggles my brain how a show can manage so many different uh, tones, right? even genres to a point, but yeah. you guys do it quite well. Yeah. It kills me a little bit when we're described as a horror show because I'm like, we're so much more than a horror. Like, we, we have horror elements, or, but I, I, I wouldn't be able to pin us down as any anyone genre really this is why i started to use the word genre as a replacement to horror because i feel like people love lock it. horror into a very specific thing but then i say genre and nobody knows what i'm talking about anymore. i love that i love that genre i'm gonna say that what kind of show is it? it's a genre show oh interesting you have any hope that Kristen will ever be able to patch things up or reconnect with her mother or at this point has cheryl just gone so far that there's no coming back from what she's done uh, i i can't see it I cannot see it. I don't see how you come back from that. Um, Christine has a very different opinion, uh, which is great because, you know, she should defend her character. I think she's passed any kind of defense. Uh, she has put my children in, 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 in incredible danger. I told her not to date a psychopath in, in, in season one. She put my husband on a shelf. He's now brainwashed sort of or has amnesia it is beyond I I, I mean I'm not going to say I'm going to kill her but I'm I'm going to kill her you know what I mean like I'm not going to maybe murder her but I need her away and then maybe in 10 years I I will see her again or something I, I don't know maybe when she gets really old uh, we can reconcile or but I I don't I have no idea how that relationship gets repaired. How about when it comes to what you want for your character versus where the story's going? Because the one thing I've obviously seen a lot of is, you know, fans really wanting Kristen and David to get together. But oh, yeah. like, I, I like the two of them together. But is that really the best thing for, I mean, both of them for a variety of reasons? No, I think I like the slow burn. I love Demon Kristen as an addition. I think it's really fun. Um, way to you know explore that and 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 she's she actually i like her so much and she's so she really wants just wants love and uh i tried to make her someone you know a demon with a heart and uh, yeah I, I i think that's i think that's really fun i'd like to explore that a little bit more if i had my pick i would like to see maybe him you know hanging out with kristen demon kristen and me finding them or him alone or I don't know but I'm I'm quite weary of um, actors telling um, uh, writers what they want to see next it always kind of annoys me especially when you have writers as good as the kings I I I know how to act their stuff I think they should write it in whatever direction they want to write it and um, it has it has been amazing what they've written so I'm sure they can up, come up with way better things than I can Sometimes I'll like have some feedback. So there's a scene written and I'm like, I don't think I'll have some feedback in terms of how I think emotionally. I need to find out a way to play it emotionally and, and to, to make it make sense and to make it make sense for Kristen. So I might write back, hey, is it possible to add a line about whatever, a guilt or blah, 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 or to include uh, what we had in so so that I feel like it makes the heart of Kristen is is full <laughs> and it's beating in the right in the right way and then I know how to play it better. Um that like the storyline around the 
the de- the baby that was uh, you know, the demon baby episode, the the parenting, demon of parenthood, I think it was called. I remember like that was something where I did have some 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 wishes that I then said, because I thought it was really, I thought it had to be really heartbreaking for Kristen that somebody else was carrying her child. And like the first draft that I read, it wasn't. And I just needed that to be just horrifying. It wasn't that it was all different. There was just like a little bit more distance to your genetic material, where I think like Kristen is such a mom. And the way that I would understand it, I don't have children, but if I were to think that I had now a child, like some of me was somewhere, I would, I, I wouldn't know how to, yeah, it would just break my heart. And then, and then it gets really complicated because clearly this woman was really nice and okay, we're going to maybe make it work, but I didn't donate my eggs to someone. I must let you go. I could clearly talk thank about you. the show all day long, but thank you so much for your time and thank huge, you, huge, huge congratulations. I am counting down to season four. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Perry. 